Michael, let's talk about trauma mm -hmm. and what that can mean for people. It, the word is used quite loosely about mm. lots of things. Mm. Um, some people have depicted it as a big T trauma, which mm. is very significant, or small T. Mm. And I think the small T trauma is thrown around fairly loosely. Mm -hmm. But from your perspective, uh, when we use the word trauma, what are we talking about? Well, I like to think trauma has two fronts, right? One is those really terrible things that should never, ever happen, like mm. people being abused or raped or attacked or shot, mm. murdered. Um, yeah, that affects families and murder, mm. of course. Um, but then there's other sorts of trauma that happen, which is abuse, neglect with children when they're younger or elderly people in a nursing mm. home or even in family care. Right, for that matter, it's not just nursing homes that might neglect or care, not care for people. Um, that can be traumatic. But also there's another form of trauma. Um, when I was younger, my dad had a car accident not far from where we are now. And he lost his arm in that accident. And that was quite traumatic for him. Mm. Um, it was quite traumatic for the family, right? Uh, I myself had an accident in my workplace many years ago where I fell off a scaffold onto a concrete floor falling nine metres and that was trauma to my body mm. but also to my sense of self mm. when I was able to move around again after mm. a number of months. Mm. And so there's trauma that comes in the form of physical injury, mm -hmm. there's trauma that comes in the form of psychological impact, there's trauma that comes in the form of threat to life and there's trauma that comes in the form of threat to relationship even. Mm. Mm. So it, it, trauma itself is not just about one type of thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, some people will say that we can measure this and there are measures for certain sorts of trauma and they use the word PTSD. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you explain a bit about that? Um, well, that, that's um, the testing for that is done by psychological measures, and there are 17 criteria that have to be met for someone to be diagnosed with PTSD. I'm mm. not going to go through them now, mm. but there's pretty strict criteria about that. Mm. So when someone gets diagnosed with PTSD, it's not some small thing. It's mm. quite serious. Mm. But having said that, PTSD is not something that you have to be crippled with. Mm, that's right. right? You mm. can get over it and you can mm. learn to live with it. Yeah. Right? That's really important for mm. people to understand mm. that. But basically, once a person is diagnosed with PTSD, there's many different forms of treatment for that person. Yes. They don't have to just sit in a chair and not go out their front door. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. My understanding is, say, the worst trauma that people can have as rape, you know, physical violation, mm. and that 50% of people who actually are on the end of that outrageous mm. action mm. get PTSD, but 50% don't. Mm. Combat, combat veterans, the same. 40%, mm. if they've been in, you know, heavy combat situations will get PTSD as opposed to the 60% who yep. don't. So mm. there's something going on in PTSD where some people get it and they are traumatised by whatever has happened, but there's a, you know, a significant proportion don't. They don't. And right. what is the difference mm. from mm. your point of view? Well, I mean, I don't just see it in the context of rape or war. Mm. Um, being raised in a family where you've got a violent parent, yeah. for instance. You can have five people in the family and three of those people don't like someone yelling. Mm. They get startled, they get shocked by that. Mm. The other two, mm. hey, so what? Mm. Doesn't affect them. Yeah. So what's going on there? It's not a weakness with someone. No. It's just the person themselves. Mm. Depends what's going on for them. Yeah. Right, and what happens there is a person psychologically, right, when this happens, they can't make sense of it. 
Mm. So it affects the body. That's the important thing to mm. know here. Mm. Trauma gets trapped in the body. Mm. It's not just a mind thing. It's not yeah. just a thing that happens mentally. Mm. It gets trapped in the body. It affects the nervous system. Mm. And depending on the person themselves, how their body responds to that. And when that happens and it gets trapped in the body, that's when most people will get diagnosed yes, with PTSD. That's when they get stuck on that's, whatever it is. Yes, that's yeah. when they get stuck on yes. whatever it is. That's yeah. right. Whether it's a mm -hmm. being angry or whether it's a war situation or unfortunately a sexual assault. Yeah. Mm. So there's the initial shock and then um, people get stunned or disbelief yeah. they can't believe this has yeah. happened they yeah. pinch themselves or yeah. but once that's gone in and um, there's a there's a sort of a procedure that people almost follow mm. but not everybody follows this but mm. you know the, the shock and the disbelief initially mm. they pinch themselves mm. I'm, I'm in a nightmare um, I'll wake up this has not mm. happened mm. you know that's mm. typical yeah. you know I can't mm. believe this has happened mm. so um, people can get anxiety about things but trauma has a different intensity and like you're saying it gets stuck in the body doesn't that's it that's right yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's not just normal anxiety like mm. We see a lot of people who have what we call generalised anxiety or mm. social anxiety, mm. but this is way beyond that, yeah. way beyond that. Mm. And it has a lot to do with how the brain changes the person's perception of themselves in any given situation, not just in a mm. threat situation. Mm. Part of what happens is that person sees themselves in a threat situation every moment of the day. Yeah not just when there's a loud yeah. noise, not just mm. when there's a similar mm. smell or odour. That That's can right. trigger a response. That's right. But they, they like that all the time. Yeah, repetitively switched on yes. and all their systems are at high alert. High they? alert, higher arousal. Mm. Mm. When a high arousal state constantly, and you can yeah. imagine um, people get in a high arousal state when they go to a party and they're having a good time. Mm. And, but if you were like that 24-7, seven, seven days a week, your body would become very, very mm. tired. Mm. Well, that's what happens with people with PTSD. Yeah. They're in high arousal state all the time and their body becomes very tired, their mind becomes very tired, mm. their emotions become very tired. Mm. And it's not their fault. Mm. It's not because they're choosing to be like this. It's because of the PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are some very good programs or ways of dealing with this but often the more intense and complicated the PTSD is the more intense the treatment has yeah. to be and mm. there are some really good ones out there yeah. that people use yeah. quite effectively yeah. to actually if they're part of that 50% who are re literally sort of crippled with it yeah. uh, that it can lessen the effects and they can work through it and there's that idea of You've got the trauma, but then you've got uh, post-traumatic growth, haven't you? Yeah. It's like yeah. this life, this is where it happened. You know, yeah. it went through a big W thing, mm. but you've got the people who then, yeah, that's part of my life, but they yeah. can grow in another way yes. with yeah. their life. Yeah. Yeah. And that growth doesn't just happen internally because trauma doesn't just affect the person that it happens to. Mm. It affects their partners, Mm. affects their relationships, affects their workplaces. Some of them don't get back to work. Mm. But when they do get back to work, people say, they're a different person. Mm. And you can imagine if someone says that to you, you're a different person. They're already feeling different in themselves. That can be quite crippling, mm. be quite disparaging to them. Mm. So mm. a lot of what happens in the post-traumatic growth is people have to actually see the growth, not just in themselves, but also in their relationships, mm. in the way they approach life. Mm. And that has to do with their mental approach, what they mm. think about themselves, mm. how, they how they regulate their emotions mm. in their body mm. and in their relationships. Mm.